blessed to be a blessing. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and every other living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 1, verse 28. The foundation of the creation and existence of man is a blessing. After the creation of man, the first responsibility God performed toward him was to bless him and place him above all other creatures. God is blessed, and we are equally blessed as his children. God has given us dominion over every other creation. The creations of God obey the commands of men by divine order. Although man lost his perfect placement when he transgressed against God in the Garden of Eden, believers have been restored to their original state of dominion through Christ. Believers are not to be pitied or ridiculed. We are God's representatives on earth. We are both blessed spiritually and physically. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. God has blessed us with everything we need for our physical and spiritual well-being. Our Father owns the land, and we are His heirs and heiresses. Hallelujah! Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. When we talk of God's blessings in a man's life, many of us only think of our finances. We think we must be given a financial breakthrough in order to be considered blessed. God can bless you that way, but it's not the only way. A financial breakthrough is only one of the numerous ways God blesses his people. Before we can ever appreciate how greatly we are blessed, we will need to see beyond financial blessings. Of what benefit is the riches of a man who spends all of his life in sickness? Being rich does not guarantee having a great life. In the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 15, And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. A lot of the time we look at wealthy people and think they have it all, but we don't know what they're struggling with in their lives. Like the famous saying goes, money can't buy happiness. So let us not be envious of others and thank God for what we have been blessed with. God can pour out his blessings on other aspects of our lives, such as health, marriages, academics, businesses, ministries, and what have you. Unfortunately, many of us take these blessings for granted. No one can actually enjoy his financial blessings to the fullest if other areas of his life are not blessed too. Believers must learn to appreciate God for how greatly God has blessed them. If God is to charge you for the oxygen you breathe per day, as our hospitals do, do you think you'd ever be able to pay his bills? If God should charge us per minute for talking, like our telecommunication companies, do you think you would be buoyant enough to pay his bills? A holistic view of God's faithfulness over our lives would make us realize that we're truly blessed of the Lord. I know some may argue that unbelievers are then blessed too. Yes, that is God's act of benevolence toward all men. But we are more blessed than them. Remember, we have spiritual blessings too, and they don't have those. Let us read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. It shows us how blessed we are just to be called a child of God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, 
to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him we have also obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Just by being a child of God, we are already blessed above the rest. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Believers should not only appreciate God for their blessedness, they should also become blessings to their world. We are blessed to be a blessing. When our blessedness begins to positively affect other people, then we can be said to have become a blessing. Keys that activate blessings. There are a number of things that unlock our physical and spiritual blessings. I would like to call them the laws and principles that govern being blessed. Some of those principles include obedience, faith, and giving. Sometimes, instructions will precede our miracles. Our obedience to these instructions is what guarantees the unlocking of the blessings. Obedience and faith are complementary. Our compliance must be backed up with faith in order to activate our blessings. Luke chapter 11, verse 28. But he said more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Believers need to have absolute trust in God and obey his instructions to the letter in order to activate their blessings. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Giving is another powerful principle that activates our blessings. You would definitely become blessed when you are an ardent giver. Jesus taught us about the powerful effect of giving in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. God's blessings upon our lives are not just meant for us. God wants us to use our blessedness to affect other people's lives. When our lives become a blessing, we will definitely win souls to the kingdom of God and earn a name for ourselves. So a truly blessed man is not somebody who possesses great riches, but he whose life positively affects others. By sharing what you have with others, you become a physical blessing. By sharing the gospel of Christ with others and enhancing the spiritual growth of the believers, you become a spiritual blessing. Blessed are the merciful. Matthews 5, 7, New International Version. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. There is something about God that we all love. We love the fact that He is merciful. If we do something that is bad, or if we make mistakes and we ask for forgiveness, He will forgive our sins and forget them. This is because He is a merciful God. In the beginning, 
God created heaven and earth. He created human beings too, and the Bible says He created us in His image, which means we have the nature of God in us. If we are a child of God, we must have the nature of God. Sin came into the world and separated us from God, but Jesus came to reconcile us. If we accept Jesus Christ, we have become a new creature, and that means we have taken the shape of God again. We have gone back to His image. We now have the nature of God. One of the key attributes of God's nature is His mercy. If we are called children of God, then we must be merciful. It is important to show mercy because that is one of the ways you can receive mercy from God.